Lockdown's been really getting to me, um, especially public behaviour, just seeing how people are kind of disengaging so quickly from the rules of social distancing and getting so relaxed, the lack of masks in my local area whenever we go out food shopping. It's really depressing, so I've been in a bit of a funk, and today uh, we went to an Asda and we got some food shopping, and we went to B&M to check on some gardening supplies. They didn't have them, but my wonderful wife said, can I get you some? I'll get you a little treat, and I was like, yeah. And she went, to, well, we'll go, we'll go through the toy aisle. And we went through the toy aisle to go to, like, you know, the snacks. And she said, um, do you have this Pertwee TARDIS? I was like, which one? She went, the Monster of Peladon one. I was like, I don't know. And she went to the shelf and she went, oh, I've touched it. I guess we've got to buy it now. And she bought me a TARDIS. Uh, uh, she's an absolute diamond. Uh, this is the third B&M exclusive TARDIS I've got my hands on, but this will be the first that I'm opening. Uh, I have the uh, Tom... Baker, uh, End of Planet Spiders, Start of Robot, like one, with his regenerated fourth Doctor uh, in the same packaging as this, and I have the uh, third Doctor in his TARDIS based on the Time Monster with the black base, but I don't, I don't have this one. Uh, this is one of the ones with the lovely little uh, limited edition uh, sign on it. Um, on the back is basically the entire plot of the Monster of Peladon, which is really random. I love the uh, description of the third Doctor's outfit here. So the set features the Doctor in his splendid dark bottle green jacket and bow tie, combined with a lime-coloured shirt, dark grey trousers and shoes. The TARDIS scene here is also presented in its normal look, with matching blue base. Now the TARDISes I have unboxed, uh, mostly from 2010, uh, 2011 and before, I have a battery-free um, 11th Doctor TARDIS with a white window. I've got two of them actually, um, one from my former job. Uh, I used to keep one with me at CBBC and I got to take it home. Um, and one that I got myself in a Christmas Carol set. I've got the Lights and Sounds 11th Doctor Tardis, I've got the Lights and Sounds 9th and 10th Doctor Tardis, uh, and I, I got the first Doctor's uh, Tardis, like the very first, from the very first wave of classic Tardises they produced back in like 2010, 2011, and I have the 7th Doctor's Tardis from that wave as well. So, you know, it's been, it's been a long time coming that I would, I would get another one that I was going to open, but here we go. The reason they said not to keep it in the box, despite keeping the other two in their box because of their lovely window packaging, is this one is a bit scuffed. So I thought, do you know what? Sod it. Let's crack it open. There we are. Look at him. Uh, as with all these TARDIS sets, there is a, uh, a diorama sort of background that they all seem to have now, like the B&M sets. It's the caves where you'll find Agador. So if uh, he's getting there, get a bit restless, you just approach him and be like, Harun, Harun, Harun. <laughs> Let's talk about the Doctor first, shall we? Um, if you've ever owned a third Doctor figure, there's not really much more to say. It's the same mould at this point, like, every time. But the, uh, the focus is a bit off, apparently. There we are. Uh, the difference is the paint applications. His hair is a much more realistic kind of blonde grey, like John's actually was. But the face is weird, he's got these cold lips. The quality control since they've gone to B&M has always been kind of odd. And it's mostly in the application of paint to the face of the character. Some characters fare better than others, like the Amy in the 11th Doctor uh, 3 pack. Um, and that's it. But uh, <laughs> I don't collect them very often, so this is, you know, I, it's an exception. I, I did a whole video on the quality control of the B&M range uh, a few years ago, specifically talking about a 9th Doctor figure. Search my YouTube if you want that, or I'll uh, pop it at the end as like a little recommended thing. So, this jacket is pretty lovely. Slightly more rubbery flair to it than some of the older releases. Uh, his frilly shirt is nice. He's got the basic articulation that all the third Doctor figures have, because they're all basically the exact same mould every time without fail. No sonic screwdriver. They've sort of lost the uh, accessories in the recent B&M sets. And the ring on his hand has no paint on it. So that's a bit annoying. Um, I have to get a paintbrush on that. Um, but yeah, the hair, the wash on the hair is lovely. The face is oddly coloured. The boots and the trousers are nice. It's a, you know, it's not it's not the most vibrant third Doctor figure, but I you know I'm happy to add him to the collection. The main reason I was delighted to get this was the TARDIS. Now I can't quite possibly I can't possibly fit the whole bloody thing in, but it is just so nice. It's very lightweight. Which is always nice with these things, so they're not, you know, too cumbersome. You can shunt them along your desk nicely. Uh, when you get them out of the package, embrace yourself, because they've got two bloody drilled-in holes. You have to drill it, uh, drill it, screw it out of the packaging. So I have a uh, four-point screwdriver to hand. 
the big flaw of a lot of the TARDISes is still present. The non-existent grill and battery area, which doesn't open because it's a solid mould. These have been here since the classic ones, whenever they reuse different par same similar parts of the moulds, they just do this, so it makes it look like it's a talking toy. It isn't, which of course means that when you open the TARDIS, it's frustrating that there's a giant battery pack thing taking up the back. And if you of course wanted to put like a facade in there, or, or blackout um, material, so that it looks dark inside, you can't just surround it around the back because there's that big bloody battery pack there that isn't needed for anything and is technically a waste of screws. Which is a shame. But, uh, the door. Like a lot of the classic TARDISes, there's no phone facade on the back. Um, although what is that in there? Oh, there's like a stopper. <laughs> um, there's no pull to open that actually works. That mostly seems to be on the new series TARDISes. But there is uh, the classic kind of, that door opens and clicks. Uh, there's a little button at the bottom to close that door so you don't put too much strain on it. The paint on this is beautiful, the slightly dirty weathered look. As a fan of the Third Doctor's era it's nice to have a, a Third Doctor accurate TARDIS so I can kind of have it in them. Well, when the B&M range comes out with uh, Benton, the Brigadier and Mike Yates I will be buying that and it would be nice to have my favourite era of the classic show recreated on the shelf somewhere with the Third Doctor TARDIS and uh, more Third Doctor characters. The, uh, this is the first flat roof TARDIS that I've owned. That's quite nice. I uh, think that I've owned and had out of the box. The windows are lovely. They've got the little stained glass effect on the bottom corner ones. Uh, something I always forget to notice when we're binging the classic series is when the police call box changes colour. But it's cool to have a toy that depicts it. I basically, long story short, I'm quite chuffed with this. I think it's a <laughs> cool little addition to my collection. Um, and it just, you know. I, what more can I say? I needed a cheer up today and my wife bought me a really super cool gift based on my favourite Doctor of the Classic run, my favourite era. So I, I do recommend this and it's it's tempting me to open up the other B&M sets I've got. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I think they look lovely in the box uh, window open box package in any way, but maybe I will open them. Have you got any of the B&M TARDIS sets? If so, which? And if you've got them all, which is your favourite? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, stick around, I'll be doing more toy reviews from time to time here on this YouTube channel. Goodbye, my dears. Take care. Come along, Joe. No, oh, no, Thero Jane, I fell over.